welcome to next lecture today we are going to study an important uh, process that's called gaussian process so this process will be studied in more depth and detail in the discussion of digital communication next semester but we will define it as much as we need so what is gaussian process so you have a random process suppose n of t is a random process which will be called a gaussian process if you take any sample suppose you take n of t1 then this sample will have gaussian distribution you know gaussian distribution is characterized by two things one is the mean suppose you take mean as mu of t and variance you take as suppose sigma square of t i am talking of a general gaussian process now at time t1 its distribution will look like 1 over under root 2 pi sigma square t e to the power minus n minus mu of t square divided by twice sigma square t okay now we will be interested in uh, a Gaussian process which is white sand stationary. Okay, white sand stationary means that mean is constant first of all. So expected value of n of t, which is simply mu. Okay, and the other will be that its autocorrelation function r n of tau, which is defined as expected value of n of t n of t plus tau that will be only function of tau okay this is a general wide sense stationary Gaussian process in particular we will be more interested in a very practical or close to the practical case that's called white Gaussian process I have once demonstrated you through one example if you recall what is white process so white light if you plot frequency versus intensity then in white light the frequency component corresponding to sorry the intensity corresponding to each and every frequency component is same constant okay so in terms of our random processes it means if we have a process for which the power spectral density I write here fx of f that remains constant this process is called a white process white process and if in addition to uh, being a constant it is a Gaussian process then it's called a white Gaussian process okay white Gaussian process now suppose this height I will write as n naught by 2. This height that is the constant power spectral density values n naught by 2. Then uh, what will be the autocorrelation function? You see autocorrelation function will be Fourier inverse of the power spectral density. So that is Fourier inverse of this constant n naught by 2. You know the Fourier inverse of constant is uh, delta function, so it is delta of tau. So this will be the autocorrelation function of white Gaussian process. Okay, and if this process is modeling a noise in communication system, we will call it white Gaussian noise okay w g n and here is a term which is used in communication systems usually this noise gets added up suppose you have a signal x of t suppose x of t can be dsbsc signal fm signal you transmit it what happens at receiver this white gaussian noise gets added and you receive y of t y of t is the received signal so we call this noise then additive this channel as additive white Gaussian noise channel AW 
जी है ओके सो देर आर नॉट ऑफ डिटेल विद इट एज ए टोल्ड वी विल डेफर दैट टिल अवर डिजिटल कम्युनिकेशन देर वी नीड इन द डिस्कशन सब्सिक्वेंट डिस्कशन दिस मच नॉलेज इज सफिशेंट फॉर अस नाउ इफ यू कंसिडर अ बैंड पास सिस्टम दैट इज यू हैव अ बैंड विथ सपोज बी ओके सो अर बैंड विथ ऑफ द सिस्टम इज बी हर्ट्स बैंड विथ इज बी सो ऑन एंगुलर फ्रिक्वेंसी स्केल दिस इज दैन टू पाई बी दिस इज माइनस टू पाई बी ओके so it is as if you have passed this noise through a band pass filter okay so let's let's see the effect so so here is a gaussian noise extended from all the frequencies so this is the power spectral density i, I will call it s n of omega it's constant suppose n not by 2 okay it is passed through a band pass filter band pass filter the ideal band pass filter will have the frequency representation something like this so 2 pi b minus 2 pi b okay so let this amplitude be 1 so what will be the output so let me call this h of omega you know that we have proved this that s y of omega will be equal to s n of omega h of omega uh i think this is square here yeah right square okay and uh it it basically it's for uh, omega less than 2 pi b less than minus 2 pi b okay so you know this is having height 1 so h of omega is simply 1 so the output will look like this minus 2 pi b this is n not by 2 or on frequency scale that is s of f it will be b by it will be b it will be minus b and this is n not by 2 okay now this is the uh, you can say a, a band pass model for gaussian noise and what will be the total power total power will be area of this rectangle that is n not by 2 times 2b which is n not b this is the reason for taking n not by 2 height so that the total power becomes nice n not times b okay now using these concepts we will like to now analyze the communication system in presence of noise okay so to begin with we will first take i will explain you that that's called base band communication systems base band communication system baseband means when you don't modulate the signals to higher frequencies you know baseband can be used for directly it can be used in wireline communication okay wireline suppose telephone so for telephonic purpose or any line to line communication you need not to have uh, you know modulation and shift the components to higher frequencies now you may say we don't use too much but the concepts here are very useful when we want to analyze the uh, which are called pass band communication systems wherein you use the modulation by the way your optical fiber communication is also base band because you directly use and also the lan communication the lan wire which you are using that also is base band communication actually because you are using coaxial cables so the base band communication system can be modeled as you will have a transmitter then there will be a communication channel so communication channel can be any medium like wire optical fiber lan cable you know now comes the thing which we have not considered yet that is the noise we call it channel noise channel noise it gets added up i show adder here <coughs> and then you have the receiver for baseband communication what how can you realize these transmitter and receiver so there will be this message signal m of t okay this is your input 
Since we don't need to modulate, these transmitter receivers are simply low pass filters. Low pass filter. Okay. <clears throat> because see, each channel is characterized by frequencies which it can allow to pass. <laughs> okay. Uh, try to understand this aspect. Suppose if you take optical fiber. Okay, this is optical fiber. You know optical fiber only permits light wave to transmit right and you know light has a very high frequency and compare that with telephone line telephone line will allow a particular group of frequencies to be transmitted similarly the LAN cable LAN cable is usually that is called a coaxial cable you will have a course on something called transmission lines there you will study this telephone line and LAN cable in detail and you have a elective course I think on optical communication where you will study the optical fiber in detail so in similarly we have free space free space is also a channel in fact in our mobile communications you are using we are having free space as a channel okay is a medium <clears throat> now in free space you cannot transmit lower frequencies you know you need to modulate that is why we need to modulate it so transmitter can be realized as a filter what it will do is it will uh, allow only those frequency components from the message which can be transmitted over the channel okay similarly receiver will also be a low pass filter in case of baseband why because uh, there may be because of noise there may be some unwanted frequency components which are out of band and we want to you know just rectify them as we have discussed in the problem also this how we model this m of t we will model it as a wide sense stationary process wide sense stationary random process you know then we have to take its mean which will be constant let's take that to be equal to zero without loss of generality and it will have some autocorrelation function hence it will have some power spectral density which will be given to us okay now we see that this wide sense stationary process is band limited band limited to b that is if we have its power spectral density that will have components within the b and minus b frequency further uh, let the transmit power be equal to st okay st is the transmit power and then at the receiver uh, so the channel noise suppose it has some power n naught and we are given the power spectral density of the noise s n of omega okay and then the power input to the receiver let that be si and the output power of receiver let that be so okay so these are some of the factors and it is more convenient to deal with the input power to the receiver rather than transmit power although they are related to each other so we will mainly concentrate on the input power at the receiver the noise power okay and the output power of the receiver first of all if we consider a distortion less channel distortion less receiver sorry if there is no distortion in the receiver then the output power of the receiver definitely should be equal to the input power of the receiver further the noise as i have demonstrated already we assume the noise to be white gaussian noise so it will be something like this i will now change a little bit the notation let the height be this script n by 2 let this height be yes. to follow the notation of the book and this is 2 pi b this is minus 2 pi b or in terms of the frequency f that is s n of f it will be b minus b this again will be n by 2 so what will be the total power uh, of noise as you have already known that so it is integral of s n of f df from minus b to b 
and that will be equal to n naught right which is nothing but actually you can just compute the area under the curve or you can do in detail n by 2 dr oh, so that will come out to be n b okay so n naught which is the uh, noise power that is now equal to n times b now we want to define an important very important uh, parameter which is the figure of merit for most of the receivers that is the signal power at the output of a receiver divided by noise power okay so signal power divided by noise power and it is also called snr signal to noise ratio so this will be then since s0 is equal to si input power to the receiver divided by this is n b it is also denoted as gamma you will see this snr it is very very crucial quantity in specifying any communication systems and usually uh, we take this 10 log to the base 10 gamma of snr and we specify the snr in decibels okay so you might have heard of uh, 10 db snr 5 db snr okay you will you will look at these uh, figures come very frequently in design of communication systems now uh, our next lecture will be now based on the analysis of am in presence of noise similarly single sideband in presence of noise and fm in presence of noise that will complete most part of your course and then we are left with couple of lectures maybe i have uh, to give a couple of lectures in fm one maybe one video on that and one video on uh, something called super heterodyne receivers okay so we are pretty much in shape now kindly revise these lectures properly we will now analyze other communication systems that is we this was the baseband now that will be passband communication system thank you